As you guys know, I've been making holograms for the last couple days, and I've made 27 generators that with those, you can make any kind of hologram that you want. And I thought, uh, to advertise my product, why don't I show you how to make one of my generators? A pretty cool one. It's this kind of like network effect where the things change. It's not too many nodes and it's not too complicated, but and gets you up and running. You can start your own little business. So uh, that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. But brief mention, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Okay, so let's begin. Let's make this thing. No need to say it. We're not schmucks. So uh, we're going to delete everything because people have been complaining that I haven't been deleting the default cube, which I don't think is funny anymore. But I, I am here to appease. Uh, we're going to add a new cube, go to geometry nodes, and make this a geo nodes group. Now, uh, the order of operations is I want to take this cube, give it geometry, and turn it into a sphere. And you might be thinking, why a sphere? It kind of looks like the network shape. So that's the first order of operation. And second of all, we need to do that cool edge effect where it's always changing and there's nodes on the vertices. So for the cube, by the way, I've been working on my radio voice. Welcome to another CG Matter tutorial. Either way, we're going to take the cube and I'm going to subdivide it. So what this does is it adds more geometry in a procedural way because I want to be able to kind of control on the fly how much geometry we have. And I'm going to turn this into a sphere so it's more evenly distributed without the corners. So every time we transform something, we're using a set position. Here's a cool trick to turn a object, any object really, into a sphere. You take the position coordinates, you run it through a vector map, and you normalize it and that turns it into a sphere. Why? Because it's looking at every position, calculating the length and saying, is this bigger or less than one? Either way, make it exactly equal to one, which is what a sphere is. It's equally distant from the center. It's normalized to the center um, is another way to say that. Um, so now we have a way to procedurally, and I know there's icospheres, whatever. You learn something from this method. That's why we're doing it. Um, we take this and we want to now turn it into something that looks kind of like, not blobular, but kind of sci-fi and angular and it's spinning and all this. And here comes an ambulance. Somebody's dying. Nope. Never mind. Turns out that was a false alarm. They're back alive. Uh, we want to give this a bit of a noise. So here's how we're going to do that. I'm just going to add a noise texture but make it three-dimensional using the color output. And on average, noise is going to add 0.5 between 0 and 1, 0.5 on the x, y, and z axis, which is why um, if you look at this from the side, it looks like it's been kind of shifted up on the x, y, and z axis. Uh, so to fix this, I'm just going to subtract by 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And you can see uh, now this thing has some distortion, and we can control that distortion. In fact, I'm going to make it a four-dimensional noise and animate the W or the seed slider over time. So now this is flickering and to make it less chaotic, bring down the scale. So now we have something that looks more reasonable. Okay, um, so we've made our distorted sphere. Next order of business is I want some of these edges gone and I want spheres on the, um, on the sphere, but on the vertices really. Uh, so let's start with that. To do that, I'm gonna instance on points. So for every point, I'm gonna instance what? a UV sphere. And when we view that, you can see it looks like a chaotic mess. Bring down the radius. And now you can see the points are moving because the vertices are moving. And we've instanced it on a point. Uh, to make it, and by the way, we can join this with the previous to get both of those. Uh, to make this more interesting, I always like to add a bit of randomization to my renders. So I'm going to randomize uh, using a float so that x, y, and z are all the same. I'm going to randomize the scale. So before, after, before, after. It just looks a lot better. So let's say the small sphere can be a radius of 0.25 and the largest sphere can be a radius of 1.5. And again, um, all of this is controlled by the subdivision level. Uh, next, what I want to do is I want to have some of these edges and not others. To do that, what we can do is saying, it, it, what? <laughs> saying, blah, blah, blah. If we want only some of the edges, uh, why don't we get rid of some? So we can say that we can delete the geometry. We're going to delete edges based on a random function. And you can also use a noise. Uh, but this is nice because it has a 0 to 1 probability, not a 0 to 1 probability, a probability that outputs either 0 or 1. So you can control the amount of edges. I like to keep it at around 0.5. 
and we can actually flicker the seed value, which will change this every second because it's casting to an integer. Either way, the idea is we now join these together. And uh, if we look at this through a solid view, you can't really see much other than the faces. And if this is what you want, that's what you want. The heart wants what the heart wants, but my heart wants some uh, curves. So I'm going to mesh to curve and then curve to mesh, which seems weird. It's like going back and forth for no reason. The reason I'm doing this is when we go curve to mesh, I can actually add a bit of thickness. And uh, contrary to popular culture at the moment, we don't want it to be this thick. So something like that. And this is also something you can randomize if you want to. Um, but we need a, well, I guess you would need a constant random value. So I guess I would not recommend that. Either way, let's set this to 0.01. Uh, now we have moving edges and these spheres. And by the way, it's a bit too chaotic here. So let's reduce the subdivision level. That looks a lot better. And uh, all we need to do right now uh, to kind of complete the effect is maybe make it spin which will give it more of a cohesive feel. So I'm rotating on the z-axis, a function relative to the z-axis by time. And that makes the uh, rotation. And at this point, we can control anything about this, the resolution, uh, the average point scale based, based on a random function or the sphere scale, uh, the probability. So how many points versus edges there are. Um, and all of that. So uh, thank you for watching the tutorial. And now, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Yes, what you have heard is true. This tutorial is sponsored by Squarespace, and if you haven't heard of them, it is the best, the fastest way to make a website without any of that HTML coding nonsense. Just drag and drop templates and make your website. My website, www.cgmatter.com, was made with Squarespace, and that, that's how I did it. Three features I know you're going to love about Squarespace is one, analytics, so you can see who is going to your website, demographic type information, very valuable. Two, you can embed your social media feed directly into your website, so you don't need to redirect to Twitter. You can just put your Twitter in your website. And third and finally, as I already talked about, it's square space. It's a space of squares. You can literally just drag and drop and move things around without needing any expertise in anything and you'll get beautiful results immediately. So go over to Squarespace and use your free trial to design your website. And when you're ready to take that thing live and launch it, you can use my link in the description to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video.